Whenever I take a look at a Linux distribution, one of the questions I ask to myself is, what does this bring to the table that other distributions don't? And I always try to find that one thing because every Linux distribution is created for a reason. Like Linux Mint split off from Ubuntu for a reason. Elementary OS was created for a reason. Manjaro was created for a reason. You get the idea. So when I look at one of these off the road, very small distributions, I ask myself, why does this exist? And usually for the most part, I can discover that purpose. And it doesn't have to be a unique purpose, right? If you want to create your own Arch-based distribution, even if it's exactly the same as all the other Arch-based distributions out there, that's fine with me. That's a good enough reason to do it. As long as you're not making odd claims about how this is going to be the distribution that changes everything and you gotta just gotta try this because it's gonna be the most amazing Linux distribution you've ever tried. As long as you're not doing that, I'm okay with you making your own distribution, even if it doesn't have a unique purpose for being. So today I'm going to be taking a look at an arch based distribution. And this arch based distribution is called StormOS. And going into this, I wanted to answer the question of why does this exist? And I think that at the end of the day, this is going to be one of those distributions that exists in the realm of a lot of other Arch based distributions in that it's meant to make Arch as easy to install as possible. And when it comes to that goal, StormOS has done a really good job. Another thing that it does a really good job of is that it has some applications that are installed by default that are actually pretty unique. Like I've very rarely seen these applications installed by default on a distro. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to talk about the installation of StormOS and then we'll go through the system just a little bit and talk about what makes it different, at least in some subtle ways from other Linux distributions. So let's go ahead and jump in. So what you're seeing now is a fast forward through the installation of StormOS. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is because the installation is really nothing to write home about. It's not bad nor good. It's just a Calamari's installer with one extra page where you can select some software to install prior to the installation of the distro or during the installation of the distro. That's really all it is. There's nothing here that it stands out amongst the rest of the dozens of Arch-based distributions that also use Calamari's. Again, that's not a ding. That's just kind of the way it is. This is installing Arch Linux the easy way, right? You're using Calamari's to install Arch Linux. And for the most part, that's a good thing to do. So uh, once you get past the installer, you're presented with a login screen that looks like this. Now, I believe this is LightDM. Now, one of the things that I don't really care for right off the top is that despite it actually knowing your username... Oh, well, I actually, see, I didn't even know that. If you click on that, it it takes you that. Because if, you, if you're actually down here, it makes you type in your username. And this is the default thing. This is what shows up by default. You have to actually click on this. And I didn't even know that. So learning right at the bat. So I type in my password. And the one thing you'll see upon boot up is this uses XFC as its de default desktop environment. And it is somewhat customized. So you'll notice that they have themed bash and they have a profile for the xfc terminal that is fairly unique and i'm going to fix that display resolution that way it's full screen and you can see by default it runs the latest of everything remember this is arch linux basically it even says it's arch linux interestingly they changed the ascii art but they didn't change the os name but anyways it doesn't really matter they have the latest version of the kernel bash 5.1 xfc 4.16 all the latest stuff, but again, this is Arch Linux, so that's kind of what you'd expect. Now, in terms of memory, if you care about that kind of thing, you're going to look at about 601 megabytes of RAM used. That's about normal for XFCE. So, once you get to this stage, one of the things that I found very interesting is that you don't get a welcome screen. One of the things that this distribution kind of proclaims itself as is being a new user-friendly distribution, but there's no welcome screen. But there is a welcome screen, it just doesn't come up by default, which is very confusing to me. Like, if we go into the menu here and click on StormOS System Tool, this is the welcome screen. And 
the thing is, is that I know that they don't call it a welcome screen because it's not called that. It's called the StormOS Utilities Program, or in the menu, it's called StormOS System Tool, whichever that you want to call it. I call it the welcome screen because it has things that you'd want to do right upon boot up. You know, refresh the mirrors, do the system updates, check for AU update, AUR updates, uh, refresh the arch key ring, which I'm not sure why you'd want that as number four. Usually when you update your system, the arch key ring should be first thing because that updates the GPG keys. And you can't actually update arch as far as I'm aware without doing that first. So I'm not sure why that's number four. Could be wrong. But again, this is the welcome screen, but it doesn't pop up by default. It does have some interesting choices that it gives you to do certain things. So like install team viewer, not something that I've ever seen before. Not something that I would ever want for myself, but if you use TeamViewer, it's interesting that there's a button here for you to do that. Uh, I'm not sure, again, why that's here when you could install TeamViewer, I'm pretty sure, in that list of software in the installer. Why it's in both places, again, doesn't really matter, but definitely something that I noticed. And there are some other things here that are for installing things like NVIDIA packages in order to use like VMs and stuff like that. And then uh, the, I'm not actually sure what I2C tools are or what LSHW is. Actually, LSHW is a tool to give you hardware information, I think. Again, an interesting choice to put here right up front. Not something that I've ever seen before. Like this is, like I'd never heard of LSHW before. I had to look it up. So yeah, it's there and it's cool. Again, I'm not sure why this here isn't given to you by startup. Like it feels like this is something that should pop up at startup, at least on the first boot, right? But it doesn't. Now it does have other tabs. So you can install things like Steam, Heroic Launcher, Lutris, Proton GE, Mango HUD, and Bottles, all from right here. You can also install other things like Flameshot and Transmission and Thunderbird right from here. You can install only Office from here, the Media Stream installer. You can also launch some settings panels from here as well. We also have things for printer and cups drivers, donations, and the Arch University, which is a place where you would get information and support. So things like the Arch Wiki's linked to here, the Arch website, some of the commands for the specific version of, of, uh, of Linux you can get here as well. So this is the welcome app, but again, doesn't start up by default. So I actually find this tool really good. There are some weird choices. Like, I'm not sure why some of this stuff, you know, like, why is TeamViewer here to begin with? It's a choice that I would not necessarily have made myself, but I'm guessing that it's here because, again, this is a new user focused distro, and it's possible that they're expecting you to help be helping someone else to install this. So you would tell whoever you're helping to install this to start up the StormOS tweak tool or whatever it's called, do December 5, so it installs TeamViewer for them, then you can take control of their computer and show them how to do stuff. Maybe that's the rationale. I'm not actually sure. It seems a little niche for me, but again, you know, whatever. So that is that. Now, there are other programs that are automatically installed. So, and some of these are things that I've never seen before installed by default on a Linux distribution. So we get GIMP by default, which is always nice. We have Firefox and Thunderbird as our internet tools. VLC and Simple Screen Recorder are both here. Simple Screen Recorder is not something that you see very often installed by default. So you get Abbey Word as the word processor, which is, again, a choice that I've never actually seen made before. Usually you see LibreOffice, sometimes OpenOffice, sometimes OnlyOffice. I've never seen Abbey Word before. I mean, I've heard of it before, but I've never used it. Things like Planner are also here. Like, this is a elementary OS app. This is primarily developed for the elementary OS platform. It's really good. It's got a front end for Todoist, which is something that I've always wanted to use, but it doesn't work well, well in window managers. So I've never been able to use it, but it's actually quite nice for a to-do list application and very, very powerful. Again, never seen it installed by default on something outside of elementary OS. And even then it's not installed by default there. We also have a something called Osmo, which is a like a planning a personal planner, which again, I've never even heard of this application before. Uh, that's something that, you know, installed that I've just never seen before. Usually it's something like uh, K organizer or, uh, you know, calendar, 
you know, is what you'd normally see here. And we have some other things here as well. So there are some things for playing and downloading movies, which I'm not actually sure what these things are. And I don't really have a way to test them because I don't have any movies or anything on here. Uh, I don't know what kind of movies this accepts in order to download them. Maybe maybe it's a front end for like YouTube DL or something. I'm not sure. It doesn't have any, as far as I'm aware, like about, you know, options here. So I'm not sure what those actually are. But again, things that I've never seen before. The rest of the stuff is going to be just your typical XFCE fare. So you're getting all the XFC settings and stuff like that. All the traditional ways of managing the XFCE desktop environment, like the themes and stuff like that. So if you open up the settings man manager, uh, this is the standard XFC window manager. Now, a lot of distributions will add stuff to this and this distribution is no different. So they've added the Stormwatch system tool. So if you ever need to get back to that and you don't remember that it's in the menu or you maybe you removed it from the menu, you could get to it from here. Let's go ahead and briefly take a look at the theming which is done in appearance. So this has quite a few themes installed by default. So there's one called Colloid that has several different variants. I believe that mostly that's just going to change the buttons up there at the top, but it does give you a lot of options if you happen to like that theme, which I have to say, it's very in a very attractive theme. It's definitely better than the default XFC stuff. So well done on that. I'm not sure what these things are. It says elementary elementary style sheet grape lime. I'm not. Like I said, I'm not sure what if we go back and then we open up like the the open up Thunar here. I'm not sure what makes that elementary, but it's an interesting theme. Very flat, but you know, kind of cool. Anyways, other than that, that is what you get with Storm OS. There's not a lot of extra stuff here outside of the things that I've shown you, and it's very minimal. So. There is a problem with StormOS, and that is the documentation. So if we go, and I saved this for last because I didn't want to ding this distribution too hard because it's actually kind of cool. But the biggest problem that they have is all of their distribution, all of their documentation is here on SourceForge. So this is the documentation that you get. And there is something here that I've not paid much attention to, and that is the StormOS repo installer. I'm assuming what that does is it adds a arch repo to pacman.conf. I'm assuming that that's what that does. Again, I don't know because the documentation isn't great. So if we go back here to this and we zoom in just a little bit so I can actually read that because it's black and white and that's always hard for me to read. Most of this stuff here is just the updates from the developer. And there's no organization. Like it's chronological, sure, but there's a lot of updates and you'd have to read through all of them. And there doesn't seem to be a place for you to find out what that repo thing is. If we go to the actual StormOS website, again, there's not much here in terms of documentation. And it's still, I've not been able to find a written place where it explains what that repo thing is or if you're supposed to use it i have no clue right but really the documentation is the biggest downside i have of this whole distribution there's just not a lot there and what is there seems to be mostly just the updates like the updates from the developer and again that's not a big ding like that's there are a ton of distributions out there that are much more lacking in any documentation like they have none whatsoever and this is just arch linux so if you ever really need documentation you could just use the arch wiki so that's not a big deal but again it's just something that i noticed uh, also i don't know if you notice this or not but they have themed firefox which is kind of cool it's not something again that you see very often usually they don't take the time to theme firefox put their own custom theme in for that that's kind of cool that they did that so very cool Anyway, so that is StormOS. If you have thoughts on this, uh, you can leave those in the comment section below. It's a very good Arch-based distribution. If that is something that interests you, go ahead and give this a try. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon and all my other social media networks. You can find those links in the video description. 
You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Like all of these fine people, thanks to all of my current patrons. I really, truly do appreciate every single one of you. All of you have supported me throughout the last year and a half, and I truly do appreciate it. If you would like to support me on Patreon, you can again do so at patreon.com slash linuxcast. I truly do appreciate all that support. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.